right, welcome everyone. In this video, we will be taking a look at the new AI for DCS. Please note that this new AI has only affected the beyond visual range performance of the bots in the game, and has not affected their dogfight performance. Eagle Dynamics has stated that such a change will be coming in the future. Also, keep in mind that this is the first update to the AI's behavior, so stuff is still subject to change. This video will be covering the behavior of the AI as per the 2.7.14.23966 open beta change log posted on April 28th, 2022. We will be taking an in-depth look at how the AI performs at different skill levels and in different situations. Furthermore, I will be talking about some changes I think would benefit the AI to increase its performance. That being said, I do think the AI is a significant improvement over the clay pigeons of previous versions. First, let me go over my testing environment. To test the AI, I used the in-game mission editor to create a mission using the Caucasus map and left the time, date, and weather options untouched. The AI itself was manually set to each skill level and the player set as an F-15C. The player and the AI are initially set to spawn at 25,000 feet, Mach 0.9, 80 nautical miles apart. This was later changed to 60 nautical miles for expediency as the start range didn't seem to affect the AI's behavior. I will note, however, that at ranges in excess of 100 nautical miles, the AI will not react to player inputs. The AI was set to have a random shooting distance as I wanted the AI to make the decision on when to fire and not force it to take a specific type of shot. Also, no ECM was used by the AI. The usage of ECM by AI should not have any noticeable effect on the bot's behavior. Overall, nearly 80 test runs were conducted with the AI using various loadouts, airframes, and scenarios. Now, let's take a good look at how the actual skill level of the AI affects its performance in a one-on-one -on -one, head on fight. First, we'll look at how the AI changes its airspeed and altitude based on skill level. Starting at the rookie AI, it seems that the bots do not change their energy state in preparation for the fight. They neither want to climb to match the player's altitude, nor accelerate to supersonic speeds for better kinematics. The rookie AI is effectively unchanged from the old AI. Where the AI begins to actually change its energy state is at the trained AI skill level and this behavior is the same across both veteran and ace skill levels. The AI will climb to match the player's altitude and very rarely exceed it, but only by a few thousand feet, and I don't believe this to be intentional. The AI never seems to want to outclimb the player for better kinematics, and in some cases even decreases its own altitude just to match the player. The AI will also begin to actually use the afterburner to accelerate to supersonic speeds at the trained skill level and above. There was no noticeable change in the AI's achieved top speed based on skill level, however. Eagle Dynamics has made it, so the AI will now defend missiles more realistically instead of just beelining it for the player while excessively dumping chaff. ED has also stated that this behavior is dependent upon the AI skill level. From my tests, I have found that all AI skill levels will in fact defend more realistically, and the effort put into this defense is visibly different between the skill levels, with rookie AI merely entering a level crank or notch defense with little to no altitude loss. Increasing the skill level to trained shows that the AI will start performing split S defenses. Increasing to veteran and ace skill levels showed an increase in the AI's altitude loss during their defensive maneuvering and added complexity to the defense itself with the ace AI effectively defeating the player's radar more often via a look down notch. And the AI will attempt to stay below the player until the player flies to the deck. Along with the crank and dive from the AI, it will also throttle back out of afterburner to further improve the effectiveness of its crank defense. Now, as far as ED's claims that the AI will now use effective intercept geometry based on skill level, I haven't seen any difference between the skill levels. Nor did I see the AI attempt to use any intercept geometry other than pure pursuit with a slight lag. So this will certainly need some work before the AI can effectively intercept and cut off players. One thing to note is that while Eagle Dynamics states that the AI will randomly choose a direction to defend, I found this to be untrue as far as the initial defense is concerned. In nearly 100% of the tests, the AI chose to defend to its left. Even changing the starting orientation of the AI aircraft did not change this outcome. From here, more often than not, if the AI survived the first missile, it would turn cold and then recommit in a left-hand turn. Sometimes it would simply continue flowing to its left. So perhaps there's something wrong with whatever randomness algorithm they are using, or it's simply non-existent. So when it comes to the AI's preference in weapons, it seems that 
that sometimes it's a coin flip and sometimes it's very clearly preferential. For example, when testing whether the AI would prefer the longer range R27ER over its shorter range R27R counterpart, the AI only chose one or the other in a perfect 50-50, which means the AI seems to not really care about taking a shot with the most capable missile it has equipped. This coin flip persisted when testing an AI F-15C equipped with one AIM-120B and one AIM-120C, where a very noticeable preference was seen was whether the AI wanted to use a FOX-1 or a FOX-2 as the first shot. In this case, the AI was given one R-27ER and one R-27ET. The AI clearly preferred shooting the player with an R-27ER when the player was not in afterburner, shooting it 100% of the time. When the player was in afterburner, the AI would use the R-27 ET 100% of the time over the R27 ER. This is something I noticed when giving an AI F15C AIM 120s and a couple AIM 9Ms. The AI would close into AIM 9 range if the player does not fire a shot to force the AI defensive. Now, when given the choice between Fox 3 or Fox 1 missiles, the AI will always choose the Fox 3 missile, as was seen conducting this test with a J11A equipped with one R77 and one R27 ER. Even though the R77 has far in inferior range compared to the R27ER, the AI still chose the FOX3 over the FOX1. Countermeasure usage by the AI has definitely improved from the old days of the AI just excessively dumping chaff until it ran out, and not caring about the aspect in which the chaff was deployed. So that's a plus. The AI will in fact deploy chaff when attempting to enter a notch or during beam aspect maneuvers, and it seems to be a lot more mindful of its usage. However, the flare dispensing seems unchanged as the AI would just start dispensing flares in a slow, program-like fashion when the player gets within 3 nautical miles of the AI. Moving on to the multi-ship performance of the new AI, it seems the AI really prefers to shoot at all targets it can in a TWS-capable jet equipped with FOX 3s in the case of testing a player F-15 with an ace skill level wingman F-15 equipped with AIM-120Bs versus two more F-15s also equipped with AIM-120Bs. The other very interesting thing to note is that the AI wingman for the player seems to engage targets at the earliest convenience rather than waiting for a random shot range. All that was done to get the wingman AI to attack was using the command menu to order the AI to engage bandits. Comparing this to the opposing AI, we see that they don't tend to engage their target at the earliest convenience if set to shoot at a random range. On top of this, the friendly AI will attack very aggressively, not even defending after shooting. It would wait for a missile warning to defend, which usually resulted in the AI wingman's death. One note to make on how the friendly AI engages targets is that if you simply tell the AI to engage bandits, then it will engage up to four enemy aircraft all at once, if possible, given TWS and FOX3 capabilities. The only way to get the AI to sort specific aircraft is by manually telling it to target the primary contact you have selected on your own radar, which makes it quite complex and time consuming to hit all the buttons to make these commands as you add more wingmen and especially more targets. Now, this issue can be solved with programs such as voice attack or simple hotkey programs, but I think a nice addition to the command menu for this would be to tell the AI flight to sort via azimuth, range, or altitude to simplify and shorten the sorting and to ensure your wingmen are attacking a specific target so they don't blow all their missiles at once trying to take down a group of enemy aircraft. I don't play single player personally, but I think this would be a welcome addition for those of you that do. So, let's talk about some things I think Eagle Dynamics can do to improve the AI in DCS even further. Number one, have the AI be more opportunistic with their shots. It seems as though setting the AI to shoot at a random range is too random for a realistic fight, especially against the highest level AI. It makes sense for the rookie AI to push the player into AIM-9 range, even while equipped with AIM-120s, but not the ace level AI. So the AI should be prioritizing taking the most effective first pass shots possible to really try and match or beat the player's own first shot, because I think it's just way too easy to take advantage of the AI when they refuse to take a good parameter shot at you. Number two, I believe the AI should prioritize firing the most capable missile to complement the AI taking the most opportunistic shot possible. If a player has the choice between firing an R27R or R27ER, they are most certainly going to choose to fire the better version of the missile. Also, this should solve the problem of the AI just pushing the player into FOX2 range. 
Number three, the AI should try and maintain lock a lot longer in Fox 1 engagements. During all the tests in which the AI fired a semi-active missile at the player and the player fired back, the AI would constantly break its own lock to defend even if it fired first. This obviously defeats the purpose of firing a semi-active missile and affords the player no challenge once the AI breaks its own lock. Number four, improve the AI wingmen so that they are less suicidal. In the current state, at least with the TWS and FOX-3 capable wingmen, they are more of a distraction for the enemy aircraft than they are an asset to the player. The AI should still try and defend incoming missiles if the player tells it to engage targets instead of just charging head-on into the enemy's missiles. Number 5. Improve the AI's ability to push its jet to the limits to increase missile performance. As it stands right now, the AI only wants to match the player. The higher skilled AI should be looking to beat the player if in a jet capable of doing so, such as the heavyweight air superiority fighters of the Eagle and the Flanker. In conclusion, I do believe the changes made to the DCS AI is a very important milestone for Eagle Dynamics in improving the overall quality of the game. It opens the door for so much more improvement to the AI, such as the addition of the AI performing different BVR tactics with varying complexity, or even improving the anti-air AI so that external scripts are no longer needed to have a realistic SAM environment. This truly is a big step towards improving the overall health of DCS and helping the players enjoy a more realistic simulation. So, while the AI still isn't perfect, I certainly think it's going to give the average DCS player a run for their money. Anyways, that's all I've got to say about that, so let me know in the comments if there are any improvements you would like to see made to the DCS AI for the future, or just let me know your thoughts on this newest AI development. So, if you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button, it's much appreciated, and if you wish to see more, then feel free to subscribe. With that out of the way, thank you all very much for watching, and have a nice day.